welcome to Nexus Medical Media. Uh, if this is your first time, I would like to welcome you to this YouTube channel where I cover a comprehensive preclinical sciences. I talk about biochemistry, um, microbiology, pharmacology, and you will also find some uh, uh, physiology videos, right? So if you click on the uh, playlist, you will find like a different uh, playlist. We covered uh, uh, more than 200 videos, guys. In this video, uh, we'll be talking about fungi. We're going to have like the general uh, view of mycology. Uh, we will talk about uh, just the, the common features that you find in fungi. We'll conclude it by uh, talking about a classification and we'll use that classification uh, to make a series of videos. We'll talk about each class in a separate video, right? So I'm happy that you are here. So let's start together and I encourage you to watch this in a playlist so that you will be understanding it. And uh, if you check in the uh, description, I will provide uh, links to uh, different social media handles where I can share with you uh, the, this presentation, right? Once again, uh, thank you. So let's begin. To have a clear understanding of fungi, there are terms that we need to go through, right? So the first one is yeast. What is a yeast, right? So this is a unicellular growth form of fungi. And the shape uh, they differs, they varies from spherical to ellipsoidal. Reproduction of the yeast is through budding, formation of buds. Um, uh, they produce at a slower rate compared to that of a bacteria. And when buds do not separate, they can form long chain of yeast cells and this will be called pseudohyphae. Right, so what is a hyphae? Hyphae, these are like thread-like branching cylindrical tubules composed of fungal cells attached end to end. Uh, hyphae grow by extending in length from the tips of the tubule. Next is a mold. What is a mold or micelle? Right. So these are multicellular colonies composed of clumps of intertwined branching hyphae. Molds grow by longitudinal extension and this one produce spores. Right. So they are spore producing. Right. So what are spores? These are reproducing bodies of molds. And spores are rarely seen in skin scrapings as you are going to see in the upcoming videos. Right. Dimorphic fungi. What are these? These are fungi that can grow as either yeast or a mold, depending on the environmental conditions and temperature. Right. So usually grown as a yeast at board temperatures. Saprophytes. Right. So this is a class that live in and utilize organic matter as soil, rotten vegetation, and they use this uh, as a uh, source of energy. But in some cases, they end up infecting human beings, right? So we'll talk about the saprophytes uh, later. Right, so now we are going to have a general uh, look at the morphology of the fungi. Starting from the outside of this cell, some fungi have what we call a capsule. Right, so this is a polysaccharide coat that surrounds uh, the cell wall. Right, so a capsule has antiphagocytic properties. What does this mean? It means it allows the fungi to evade phagocytosis. Right? For example, uh, an example of um, fungi that have a capsule is a Cryptococcus neoformans. Right? So this capsule can actually be visualized with a specific method of staining. It's called Indian ink. Right? But now we covered the capsule, which is right round, right? So going a little deeper, we will see a cell wall, right? A cell wall here. This is composed mostly of carbohydrates with some proteins. And the uh, fungal proteins are usually potent antigens. What are antigens? Those are the particles which can stimulate or trigger our immune system. To react to start producing the antibodies. 
going further in we have the cell membrane right so this membrane right so this is essential it is a bilayer cell membrane that is the innermost layer uh, around the fungal cytoplasm it contains sterols right so human beings we actually have this sterol but it's a specific kind so in fungi it's called a gosterol and in human beings it's called cholesterol majority of antifungal agents work by disrupting the egosterol in two ways two or more either by binding to and by punching pores on the fungal cell wall right so you can see the examples of those antifungals are uh, amphotericin b and nystatin another method is by interfering with the synthesis of this egosterol and the antifungals in this group are azoles and echinocandines etc right in classification of fungal infection you need to know that the fungal infections are infections that result from the invasion of tissues by one or more species of fungi Right. So some fungi are opportunists. It means they infect those who are immunocompromised. But others are pathogenic. It means these will cause disease whether your immune system is intact or not. Right. So common fungal infections will range from superficial uh, localized skin infections to deeper uh, tissue infections or even uh, like uh, serious uh, infections maybe in the blood that uh, like uh, septicemia or systemic diseases right so these are the classes that we'll be using in covering these fungi right so we have a separate video looking at the superficial fungal infections cutaneous fungal infections subcutaneous fungal infections and the systemic fungal infections and on systemic we just have an overview and then we'll talk about those fungi in the systemic group one by one right but we'll also talk about the opportunistic infections which are those candida albicans aspergillus fumigatus cryptococcus uh, mucor rhizopus species uh, pneumocystis right so uh, this is what we'll be talking about in the upcoming uh, videos, right? So in this presentation, I just want to show you like uh, different organs and the fungi that are found in uh, most of those organs. For example, if you look at the fingers here, fingernails, you find candida dermatophytes. Eyes, candida, you can see in the brain, this is usually because of dissemination. They came, they came from another side and enter the brain causing encephalitis or meningitis. Examples can be aspergillosis, cryptococcus, right? You can also even see in the esophagus, thrush caused by candida in the lungs. You have a myriad of fungi like a blastomycosis, uh, dioides, um, pneumocystis, urovese, etc. And you can see in the bone, again, disseminated from another organ, you can see in the, um, um, in the vagina and in the skin. Uh, what you can see among all these is candida. It's, it's very uh, cool. No, it's not a cool bug, but it's very popular. Like It affects almost each and every system. You can see it in nails. You can see it in blood. You can see it even the liver, the spleen, the bones. Uh, in the um, uh, genital urinary system and in the skin, right? So you have to uh, watch our video on Candida, right? So thank you so much. If you've been sticking around, thank you for watching. If this is your first time, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the comment section. And most importantly, do not forget to subscribe and share with your colleagues.